Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are so happy you are here today to join us. We have a great video coming up. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We are an early retirement, debt and mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York. And our channel basically shows you how to have a full, abundant life while spending less money. Today, we are talking about cooking from scratch. You know we are big fans of cooking from scratch. Going back in time, it wasn't really until the 1950s that convenienced and processed food started hitting the supermarket and making everyone's lives a lot easier. Because up until that time, people mostly cooked with whole ingredients from scratch. In the 1950s came the introduction of so many convenience foods. And convenience foods, believe me, have a place in all our lives. As we have said so many times in our videos, there's usually always some kind of frozen ready-made pasta or a frozen pizza or maybe some frozen fish fillets in our freezer for those nights when we just can't pull it together and we need something quick and easy. But on those days when we can cook and we are motivated to cook, which is really like 90% of the time, we try to really create a lot of dishes from scratch. And I'm gonna share briefly why we do that. Number one, when you make food yourself, it's healthier. Because a lot of processed foods have a ton of sugar, fat, sodium, chemicals, things like that. And when you're making food yourself, you know exactly what is going into it. Another reason, it's cheaper. Nine out of 10 times, when you go to purchase an item or you opt to cook from scratch, you are going to find it is so much cheaper. Another one, it tastes so much better. Think back to your favorite comfort foods. I bet almost all of them were made with whole delicious ingredients. Also, when you cook from scratch, you are being resourceful. You are using what you already have in the home and that is just such a money saver. It is such a wonderful frugal habit to acquire. Even if you work full time, have small children, busy in the home, busy outside of the home, both these recipes are super doable. You are going to be surprised how easy they are. So let's get to the first recipe, which is a homemade stovetop bread. I'm not gonna say any more. I am just going to turn this camera around. We're gonna get into the kitchen and we are going to make one of the most mouth-watering breads we have ever made on this channel. Let's get into the kitchen. We are really so excited to try this bread recipe today. The ingredients are simple. It takes no time at all. You don't need an oven. You, you don't need yeast. And we're going to cook this right on top of the stove. It's similar to a non or a baslama bread. I think this is going to be a winner. The ingredients you're going to need for this recipe. Half a cup of lukewarm milk. Two cups of all-purpose flour. Half a teaspoon of olive oil half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a cup of Greek yogurt. I'm gonna be doing this by hand today. That's how easy this is. In our bowl, we're going to add our yogurt, our milk, our half a teaspoon of salt, and our baking powder. And I'm just going to mix this together and make sure that baking powder is completely dissolved. So I'm just gonna take a minute and whisk this. Now we're gonna add the flour. Now I'm just gonna mix this together. First thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that olive oil and I'm just gonna rub it on my hands. And I'm gently going to mix this together. Okay, so I just incorporated it a little bit. Now I'm gonna add 
the rest of that olive oil. Knead this for just a few minutes. I kneaded this for about a minute. That's all. You don't want to over knead it. It's a little bit sticky, but that's the way it's supposed to be. If your dough seems a little dry, just add a drop more milk. At this point, we can start cooking it right now. But I'm going to take an extra minute and just let it rest for 30 minutes. That's all. Again, you don't have to, but I'm going to just to give it a little bit of an extra rise. So I'm just going to cover it with a little plastic wrap and I'm going to let it sit for 30 minutes. Here's our dough. It is a little sticky, but that's okay. What I'm going to do on a lightly floured surface, just going to roll it out a little bit, just a little. Well, it feels like a nice dough. Now we're going to separate it into pieces. Be careful of your plastic mat if you've got it. Put these to the side and I'm going to take one at a time. I'm going to roll them out into an oval. You don't want to overwork this dough because it will get tough. If some are in a circle, that's great. If some are in ovals, <laughs> whatever works. While I'm doing this, I just put a nonstick pan on my stove to heat. And we want that pan nice and hot. I'm gonna cover those pieces so they don't dry out. Now let's go over to the stove. Now this pan feels nice and warm. I can feel the heat radiating off of it. I'm just gonna take our bread and I'm going to drop it in. And we're going to watch it. We're going to let it cook. We're going to let it get some brown spots on the bottom. So it's been about 30 seconds on this side. And I'm just going to give it a flip. And you can see they are starting to puff up a little bit. We're going to just keep moving them around a little bit. No oil needed in the pan. On my stove, this area seems to be hotter than the back, so I'm going to just keep moving them a little bit. I'm continuing to just flip them and move them around. They are puffing up so beautifully. Try to flip them carefully so you don't deflate them. A really important part is to make sure these are cooked through. You see this area right here I'm showing you? It, it looks like raw dough right there. So we have to make sure the tops and the bottoms all appear to be dry. Keep flipping them, keep moving them around the pan. It will cook approximately five minutes per side total. In this pot, I just have about a tablespoon or so of melted butter. I am crushing some garlic in there just till it's fragrant. And we're gonna be brushing our bread with this. I'm gonna turn that off. We don't want the garlic to burn. I would say these are done. Look at these, how beautiful. Now I'll continue cooking the rest of the dough. Now, of course, by no means do you have to put the garlic butter on. We are going to love it this way. Give it a quick flip. And we're gonna do the other side as well. Look at this plate of scrumptiousness. Look at this, it's got a pocket in the middle. It's like a non bread, it's like a pita bread. It is just the best of both worlds. I just broke off a little piece. Oh my goodness, look at this. They are soft. They are delicious with that garlic butter. Literally 10 minutes to cook. Five minutes each side, turning them on that high dry heat. Look at this, they are absolutely beautiful. Give this one a try. There are recipes on this channel that we make where we come away saying, wow, that was a total win. And this bread recipe is one of them. It's kind of a cross between a naan and a baslama bread with a little bit of a pita pocket thrown in there too. It is soft. It tastes like a cloud. I can't explain it, but very, very delicious, very economical, very frugal, just an easy 
simple, yummy bread, not using any yeast, not heating up the oven, just a win-win. And I will type out the directions down below in the description box. So easy, so delicious. Uh, you got to try this one. And what would go really well with this delicious, soft pan bread that we made? Well, of course, some homemade hummus with lemon, garlic, chickpeas. Oh my goodness, some tahini thrown in. Let's turn the camera around, get back into the kitchen for another frugal, economical, from scratch, convenience food. And I love hummus. Such a great go-to spread or snack, but the prices were so high. So I said, let's make some of our own. So we're going to show you today how to make a simple, delicious hummus from chickpeas and a little sesame tahini. You're going to need one 15 ounce can of garbanzo beans, chickpeas, they're the same, or about a cup and a half. Then you're going to need some pure sesame tahini. What is tahini? It Basically, is. ground sesame seeds. And it's super flavorful. This container cost us just about $6. But think of how many portions of hummus you can make from this. It only takes a quarter cup of tahini per batch of hummus. So I am telling you, this is a quality ingredient that you should have on hand. And it lasts quite a while in your refrigerator covered. We have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Another item that I suggest you buy good quality. One clove of peeled garlic and about two tablespoons of lemon juice. You can add salt as well, but my garbanzo beans have salt. So now the first thing I'm going to do is take these garbanzo beans and run them under cold water and rinse them. You can keep the liquid, that's aquafaba. A lot of people do that, the liquid that the beans are stored in. And when you drain them, just take that, put it in the fridge for a couple of days. And a lot of people use that aquafaba as an egg substitute, but be careful that the salt is not too high or you're going to get some salty products if you use it like in baking or something like that. I do usually try to get unsalted beans, but alas, they did not have any. Drain them completely and then rinse them with clear cold water. We just opened the tahini and you can see how creamy and delicious this is. So we're going to need a quarter cup of tahini. In your food processor, you're going to take your quarter cup of tahini. Make sure you scrape good. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. I will link the original recipe down below. The order you make hummus is important. So the first thing we're going to do is combine the lemon juice and the tahini for one minute in our food processor. We process this for a, just about a minute. Anytime you go into your food processor to wipe anything down or to add anything, unplug it. Before you do anything, unplug it. So we just unplugged it. Now I'm wiping down the sides. I'm going to add our two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and our one clove of garlic. And we're going to process this for about a minute as well. After we processed it, we unplugged it again. And now I'm going to add half the can of the chickpeas. And we're going to process this for one minute. You can see how thick this is getting. We're going to add the other half of the chickpeas now. And we're going to process it for another minute. Look at how beautiful and fluffy this has become. Unplug your machine before you do anything and scrape down your sides. Now this is very, very thick. 
And to make sure we have the smoothest hummus we can, you can add anywhere from one to three tablespoons of water. So I am gonna start with just about one tablespoon. And then I'm gonna plug the machine back in and I am gonna process it for about 20 seconds and we'll see the consistency. We ended up using about two tablespoons of water and the consistency looks amazing. I will take it out in a minute. If you don't wanna use water, you can use the bean liquid, the aquafaba to thin it a little as well. We also added a little extra lemon juice, but this is such an easy, versatile hummus recipe. It's economical because when you think of how much hummus you're going to get from that container of tahini and then cans of beans. Look at this amazing fluffy hummus. Wait till you taste it. What I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of olive oil on top for a little extra taste. Look at how beautiful this is. When you taste this, you are not going to believe the difference between this and commercial hummus. You control the lemon, you control the spices. One of my favorite things to do with hummus is use it on top of a sandwich instead of mayo, instead of mustard, some veggies, a piece of turkey, and a spreading of hummus. Oh my goodness, how delicious. With lots of lettuce and tomato, so good. So fresh, so delicious. I'm sorry, until you taste this and make it, you will not believe me, but there is no comparison between what we just made and buying a container of hummus in the grocery store. This just was leaps and bounds, fresher, tastier, just so much more delicious. We're gonna let Paul taste both of these two items together and he'll let you know what he really thinks. Here you go. So I broke off a piece of this delicious bread and now I'm gonna try it with some of our homemade hummus. Just gonna spread that on there like this. Oh, that looks so good. Wow. This is a double win video today. Both these recipes were amazing. So here goes the taste test. <laughs> you can't beat homemade. You just can't beat homemade. This tastes delicious. Yeah, this is just easy to make. It was fun to make. And wow. Wow. Excuse me. Hmm. You know what that means. That's Paul approved. This was a two thumbs up from Emmy as well. Both these recipes were Paul and Emmy approved. Give these a try. I promise you will not be disappointed. Today's question of the day. What is a food item that you make from scratch and refuse to buy in a convenience form? It could be anything. Think about it. With us, it was just the hummus and the naan bread. We make our own broth. There are so many things that we make ourselves instead of buying. I know we would love to know what yours is, and I know our viewers would love to know as well. This way, by naming something you make from scratch time and time again, it will allow us to think about it and say, wow, that's a great idea. We're gonna give that a try as well. So we thank you for sharing that with us in advance. We hope you enjoyed this video. We are getting back to basics. We're getting back to the old fashioned living. It's just so great to take a deep breath, step back, get into the kitchen and be creative. I guarantee you the results will be 100% worth it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It helps us so much. Subscribe if you haven't. This channel and the community that is within this channel is got to be one of the best on YouTube. Our comments are uplifting, helpful, full of knowledge. So come on in and be part of our community. We ask that you stay safe. We ask that you be well. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you.